Hello and welcome dear students. Let us continue with our case law lecture in the full English version. The case law lecture as you are aware is divided into three parts. We are done with the first part, the biggest part that is case laws. We will now move on to the second part of the lecture that is the concept of ICDS income computation and disclosure standards. Before we begin, I am sure like the case laws, you have the ICDS summary also with you. In fact, if you have this summary, you will be hardly required to write anything. I just have to explain things from this summary and this will get over very fast. This is a very small part and last part will be the RTP. Both these parts are going to be very, very small. This is the full English version. What is this concept called ICDS? We as students have always been aware of something called accounting standards. What are accounting standards? Accounting standards are basically a technique to prepare and draw up our accounts. That is what we have been following all our life for making all our accounts. And a lot of changes have taken place on that front also. As we are aware slowly and gradually, our accounting standards are designed to make them in accordance with international standards. Internationally, they are known by the name of IFRS. In India, we call them. In days, like an idiot, never approach any accounts professor and ask them, Sir, when will IFRS come in India? IFRS can never come to India. Indian standards can be modified according to international principles, and we have done that. We call them in days, and as we are also aware, in days will become applicable in our country in a phased manner year after year. Now, that was as far as your accounting is concerned, and when we make our accounts using our accounting standards our accounting standards in the very first you are aware accounting standard 1 as 1 2 3 4 5 very first accounting standard we have disclosure of accounting policies under which some basic principles some fundamentals of accounting are given like going concern or accrual or consistency certain things are stated and that is what we follow regularly while making our accounts within that there is a concept called the concept of prudence I am coming to ICDS slowly with style. Pay attention to what I am saying. There is a concept called prudence. Prudence is more famously popularly known by students, teachers, people by the name of conservatism. What do you mean by the principle of conservatism? The principle of conservatism means that you should book any profit only if you are 100% sure that the profit is earned. Only realized income should be recorded. As against this, if there is any loss or any expense, that should be recorded even if there is little probability. So, profit if you are 100% sure and loss if there is little chance also by which any profit that you have shown in your accounts becomes a guaranteed profit. Guaranteed profit that at least this much. It can always be higher. But minimum this much we will definitely earn. We should always find out conservative estimates of profit. We should take into consideration any kind of loss which is possible or applicable. Even if it is not 100% sure, we should still take it into consideration. But when we talk about profits, only if it is a guarantee. That is a very, very big principle on which our accounts are based. For example, if we talk about stock in trade. Let me tell you where conservatism works. Let me give you a few examples of where conservatism works when we draw up our accounts. When we value our stock in trade, do we know accounting standard 2 says cost or NRV, whichever is lower. Why? Because we are following conservatism. Even if the market value has increased, we are not sure that we will be able to sell it at that price. And therefore, we will recognize it only when we actually earn it. That is principle of conservatism. only. That is principle of conservatism only. Tell me, are you understanding? And obviously, if we go a little further, let me talk about some other accounting standards. If I talk about an accounting standard based on government, grant. by the way, ICDS study is on the understanding that you have studied accounts because a lot of reference will be taken from accounts. You should be having basic knowledge of accounts from intermediate level, IPCC level, final level not required also. India's knowledge not at all required. Your intermediate accounting knowledge will be required. You have studied it. Even if you have forgotten when I will talk about it, you will be able to recollect. For example, I spoke about AS2. If you don't know that AS2 follows conservatism and says cost or NRV, whichever is lower, whichever is lower. If you don't know about AS2, kindly switch off your laptop device wherever you are watching the lecture right now. Go to sleep. Please go to sleep. Get up after the attempt gets over. You get up after that. You relax in life. Be peaceful. Be relaxed. Nothing. It's all okay. It's normal. 
this is life it has come it will go away just relax just cool okay so i'll give references about intermediate accounts you may not be able to remember i am not saying that you have to have it by heart right now but at least if i give reference of it you should be able to recollect okay yes i have studied this somewhere if i go somewhere else in our in our uh, accounting standards i'm still talking about accounting standards there is an accounting standard on government grants which says that whenever government is giving you grant and it is putting down the conditions you should recognize the income only after you satisfy the conditions for example government is giving you a 5 lakh subsidy and government is saying that within the next 3 years set up a big manufacturing unit in a special economic zone and we are giving you 3 years time for that we are giving you the money right now only 5 lakh rupees subsidy or grant have you received money yes but you will not recognize it as income income will be recognized only if it is 100% sure so within the next 3 years when we actually set up our manufacturing unit in the sez that is we have fulfilled the condition stipulated by the government to be eligible for getting the government grant that is when we can actually recognize the grant as income is what our accounting standard has said this is the principle of conservatism the principle of prudence means the principle of conservatism and this is how we have been making our accounts traditionally we will continue to do that now also but there is one very very big inherent limitation in following the principle of prudence in following the principle of conservatism and that is profit will be recognized only when you have 100% guarantee and losses and expenses will be recognized with little probability also and therefore there will always be a tendency to book lower profits but here we want tax we are now in direct tax we have to talk about calculation of total income and tax liability if we make our accounts by following the same accounting standard don't forget whenever we have income we start with net profit as per profit and loss we make some adjustments as per tax but at least that pnl account is made by following accounting standards only and that accounting standard contains the principle of conservatism and therefore in that profit as per profit and loss account there is a big chance that because of the principle of prudence that is conservatism you have not recognized a certain profits and you have recognized a certain expenses and losses which are not yet sure and therefore government of india all of a sudden out of nowhere came up with a plan of something called income computation and disclosure standards this is very famously known by people by the name of icds look at the name we are doing income computation we are in taxation now we are not making bookkeeping remember our bookkeeping earlier as well as now will be always accounting uh, accounting as per accounting standard or as per indas our bookkeeping will continue to be as per the accounting standards whether as or indas this is going to be for the purpose of computation of your total income and disclosure that is for the purpose of computation of your net taxable total income we are giving you a separate set of standard and that is going to be called icds that means you can continue to make your accounts as per this but now your income computation that is your ntti will be computed as per income computation and disclosure standards that means now as and icds will move together simultaneously accounts will be made as per accounting standard and computation and taxation will be made as per icds here i am asking you an insulting question be prepared and i am not taking your permission i am insulting you i am insulting you do what you want to it is necessary to insult you for your learning purposes so listen to me please is profit in accounts same as profit in tax profit as per accounts and profit as per tax will they be different sometimes sometimes will they be different they will never be same they will always be different and which is why we always start if you remember your pgbp chapter we start our computation with net profit as per profit and loss account we do add less and therefore we derive our net profit as per tax remember profit in accounts and profit in tax is never going to be same multiple factors involved now there is one more factor your accounts will be as per accounting standard and your computation will be as per income computation and 
disclosure standard and what is the big difference here what is the big difference the big difference is the principle of prudence the principle of prudence that is conservatism whenever we make accounting standard we will follow prudence that is conservatism and whenever we go to icds we will not follow prudence we will not follow conservatism this is the main difference between as and icds icds does not follow the principle of prudence that means now are we going to cancel accounting standard altogether no no accounts will still be as per accounting standard but computation of income will be as per icds so now understand what is going to happen understand you will have to do double work you will have to make earlier what we used to do we used to make our accounts by following accounting standard then go to our computation make certain changes add less like we do in pgbp and we have our taxable profit now we will have to maintain two separate sets of account books altogether the accounts book which will be made as per as or indas will be our bookkeeping and it will be furnished for company law purposes or for any other purposes for reporting to our shareholders etc and the books of accounts that we will make as per icds will be furnished for the purpose of income tax taxation purposes by following icds two separate books of accounts if i have to tell you a little more about icds obviously everything will be covered in this lecture government has notified 10 icds let me tell you the names icds 1 accounting policies icds 2 valuation of inventories we have got something called construction contract revenue recognition tangible fixed assets we have got something called securities we have got something called provision contingent asset contingent liabilities government grants these names are familiar yes because we have accounting standard of the same name so there is already an accounting standard as2 valuation of inventories and now we have icds2 valuation of inventories 90% of the accounting standard and icds is same there is only 10% difference what difference wherever accounting standard follows prudence icds will not follow prudence icds is based on the concept of early recognition of income early recognition of income that means we want to recognize your income as early as possible icds is not so powerful that it can make your exempt income taxable icds does not have that much power icds can only give government something called a time value of money for example there is an income about which you are not sure today this income may be earned may not be earned so today you are not sure about it accounting standard will not recognize this income but icds will and after 3 4 years when you become sure that you are going to earn that income then now you will recognize that income as per accounting standard means an income which was going to be recorded in future will be recorded in the present and therefore government is only getting early tax government is not getting extra tax please understand this clearly government is getting only early early tax not extra tax only early time value of money is what the government is only getting and which is why there has been immense protest against icds in our country immense protest people have requested the government to not introduce icds let me tell you the chronology understand the chronology this is a very famous term these days i'll tell you in hindi though this is the english version of the lecture but let me tell you in hindi aap chronology samajhiye you understand the chronology please government wanted to bring icds in our country from the previous year 1516 that is the assessment year 1617 previous year 1516 assessment year 1617 government wanted to bring icds from previous year 1516 assessment year 1617 in fact icds was a part of the syllabus of may 16 and there were two questions on icds in the may 16 rtp may 16 rtp but during the year people protested people said that sir we are not able to understand because as i said 90% of the as 
and ICDS is same. Only 10% places the AS and ICDS are different. Wherever accounting standard is following conservatism, ICDS is not following conservatism. That is precisely the difference between AS and ICDS. So, people were objecting and I will tell you why people were objecting. I will come back to my chronology. Why were people objecting? What was the problem here? The business community is already coming out of recession and lot of losses and all that. But fair enough, leave that aside. We will talk about the professional community. Understand the pressure on the professional community, especially when we are saying professional community. In taxation, we mean the chartered accountants who are the people responsible to ensure compliance of the law. We are the ones who will make our clients comply with the law. People look at us with respect because what government decides compliance is our responsibility. Clients don't know anything. We have to educate them and therefore it is our responsibility. Now understand what is happening. A CA has studied accounting standards. All that knowledge is waste. Now you have to study in days. I will tell you the trouble. We as students had studied something called auditing and assurance standards, double AS. Now it is replaced. CAs are required to study SA standards on auditing. We had studied Companies Act 1956. Now all those CAs have to delete that and start learning Companies Act 2013. Direct tax already we know changes every year. If we talk about indirect tax, any CA who studied excise, customs, VAT, service tax, etc. All that knowledge is a total waste now. We have to learn GST. The professional community is already overburdened. With the, with the dynamics, with so many things changing. And in that, all of a sudden, now sometimes I feel that all the subjects that I studied as a student to become a CA, all the subjects that I studied, accounts changed, audit changed, law changed, DT obviously is changing, fine. DT being my subject, I have to regularly go through the amendments, I have to go through the budget papers, I have to go through the finance act, memorandum explanation. I have to do a lot of study in DT, that is fair enough. But... The other subjects which I am and I am a teacher therefore I am studying DT. I am talking about a practicing chartered accountant. Accounts has changed. Audit has changed. Law has changed. DT is changing. IDT has completely changed. The ISCA which was there was uh, is now removed replaced with. Uh, sometimes I feel that uh, everything that we have studied has gone. Now if we really want to continue as a CA we want we will have to probably give the exam again. Because all the subjects have changed except costing and SFM. And costing and SFM cannot change for 10 years, 20 years. The lucky are the people who teach those subjects. They can use the same sum, same problem for 10 years, 20 years. Does not make any difference. With a little change that from old syllabus to new syllabus, whatever changes have taken place, they have to go through it. In fact, they are finding it so difficult to shift from old syllabus to new syllabus because they are not used to change. We as direct tax professors are used to so many changes that uh, uh, this year we had three budgets in one year, but it does not make a difference. It is a part of our life. We had interim budget, final budget and, and we had the ordinance also. But we are so used to it. I really feel bad for my uh, uh, costing and SFM faculty friends because they are not used to uh, changes and then suddenly they have to study everything because between old and new there is change. But I will tell you for sure one thing. Any, stu any, any person who has become a CA more than 10 years ago, everything has changed. So we are already having trouble of learning so much. And in that all of a sudden out of nowhere you are bringing something called ICDS. And dear government, please understand it is not bringing any advantage to you. ICDS, as I told you, cannot make your exempt income taxable. ICDS is only going to bring something called time value of money, early recognition of income. Income which was tax, which would have been taxable in future will become taxable in the present. That's it. So the whole professional community requested the government to not bring ICDS and suddenly... In the year 2016, in the middle of the year, uh, they said that uh, right now we are not understanding. Even the finance minister was not understanding what ICDS was. So, they decided to postpone. So, in May 16, I will come back to the chronology. Initially, it was a part of previous year 15-16. Therefore, assessment year 16-17. Therefore, a part of portion of May 16. And there were two questions in the RTP on ICDS. But in the middle, they removed it. ICDS only was postponed. And therefore... ICAI also postponed applicability of ICDS in November 16 attempt it was removed from portion. But this government is known to be very very stubborn. Once they decide something they don't go back on this. They are very very stubborn. So if they have decided we want to change the currency 
they did it. If they decided they want to bring GST, they did it. If they decided they have to bring a lockdown, they did it. They don't listen to anybody. And same thing happened when as far as your ICDS was concerned. Now they said that from previous year 16-17 mandatorily it will be applicable and from previous year 16-17 that is assessment year 17-18 ICDS became applicable in our country. I will go into more introduction don't worry. ICDS became applicable in our country from previous year 16-17 and assessment year 17-18. Is accounting standard deleted? Ella. No. No, no, no. English lectures for South Indian students. Accounting standard deleted? No. No. Accounting standard will continue for bookkeeping. ICDS will be applicable for computation of total income. So now our IC, now our NTTI will be computed using ICDS technique from previous year 16, 17, that is assessment year 17, 18. That means can I say May 17 again ICDS came back in the portion? And knowing the system of ICAI, I told my students of May 17, listen dear students, this is where experience helps. ICAI has a tendency to ask you questions from past RTPs. All those students who have studied the full course with me know this for a fact that I always stress that you should at least do RTPs of four attempts to call yourself fit for the exam. You should also or you should always do uh, at least four attempt RTPs. Knowing the system of ICAI, I told my May 17 students, listen, till now there have been two questions in RTP, that was May 16 RTP where ICDS was there because November 16 it was removed. You do those two questions, your preparation is over and out of those two questions, one question came for six marks in May 17 exam on ICDS, six marks that was with respect to evaluation of inventories, those who have studied partnership chapter with me are aware about that. Case law of Supreme Court on in the case of an assessee called Shakti Trading Company. In case of dissolution of firm, what is going to be the stock valuation? That case law got deleted and in replacement, we have ICDS2, which says that stock will always be valued at net realizable value. It was a six mark question on that particular issue, ICDS2, valuation of inventory. So from previous year 16-17, from assessment year 17-18, ICDS has become applicable in our country from previous year 16 17 assessment year 17 18 icds will be applicable so what are the things we are clear about till now accounting standard will continue to be adopted for bookkeeping icds will now be adopted for the purpose of computation so we will have to do double work maintenance of books of accounts and preparation of computation but client will not pay us twice which is why the professional community is very very upset if we were getting paid twice we would not mind actually doing the work but we won't get paid twice we will be doing double work, but we will be getting single payment. Now, let's go into some more introduction of ICDS. Whenever there is any conflict between ICDS and the plain language of the Income Tax Act, whenever there is any conflict between ICDS and Income Tax Act, remember ICDS is not so powerful that it can overrule any provisions of Income Tax Act. The Act will override ICDS. However, whenever there is any conflict between ICDS and any case law, including Supreme Court case law, like it happened in the case of Shakti Trading Company, then the case law will be overruled and ICDS is superior to the case law. That means, first position will be given to the Act, second position will be given to the ICDS and third position will be given to case laws. First Act Second ICDS, third case law. There are constitutional reasons behind it. You need to understand the constitutional reasons to understand what I am saying. In our country, we have a parliament which makes the law and we have a judiciary where we have high court and supreme court. And in a democracy, this, this is general knowledge. Unfortunately, people come in CA final, they become chartered accountants, but they, they have absolute no general knowledge as to how the civic system of our country works. We are living in a democracy. And remember that in a democracy, the public is the most powerful, most powerful entity. A democracy is of the people, for the people, by the people. So anything that the public will decide will be final. Anything that the public will decide will be final. Then people wonder if public decides everything and that is final. Then why is Mr. Modi or Mr. Shah so powerful? I'll explain. Please understand. We have a population of 130 crores, 1. 1. 1.3 billion as they say, 130 crores. 130 crore people cannot gather at one place. 
we cannot accumulate at one place and therefore every geographical area sends a representative to the parliament the lok sabha has got more than 550 seats and those candidates are members of parliament are elected from every area for example in mumbai we have six lok sabha seats overall in maharashtra i think we have 48 or 48 or 42 one of them highest is uttar pradesh which is 80 second and third is maharashtra and west bengal one of them is 48 another is 42 i think maharashtra only is 48 and second is where third is west bengal 42 every area like that totally more than 550 members of parliament are elected so i stay in an area called south mumbai we vote on the parliament election day lok sabha election day and whoever gets the most votes gets elected when that person is going and sitting in the parliament from our area let me name the honorable mp from my area it is a gentleman called mr arvind savant from shiv sena who won for the second time from south mumbai mr arvind savant he was the only minister of shiv sena in the union government he was the minister of heavy industries but when shiv sena separated from bjp he had resigned as minister so if you read about him somewhere you'll come to know he is the member of parliament from our area mr arvind savant when Mr. Arvind Savant is sitting in the parliament, it is not Mr. Arvind Savant, it is entire South Mumbai. Any vote of Mr. Arvind Savant is actually the vote of entire South Mumbai. And likewise, all members of parliament vote. And more than 50% members means more than 50% of the country. And that is how decisions are taken in the parliament. And which is why that party who crosses that magical number of 272, which is more than 50% of the parliament strength, if you cross that number, that means your party's decision is the decision of the public. And which is why the president will always give first opportunity to the leader of that party to form the government. So, in 2014, Mr. Modi had 280, 283, I think, seats for his party, 282 or 283 seats. And now, we know he has got 303. Supposingly, all his affiliate parties leave him also like Shiv Sena did. Even then alone, BJP has got more than 50% seats in the parliament. That means any decision of that party is the decision of the country. You need to know all this. Now understand, we have a judiciary which gives case laws, these high court, supreme court judgments. But if the public of India, the people of India does not like the judgment, the people of India has the power to cancel. The people of India have the power to cancel the case law. But we cannot gather at one place. So we have appointed a we have appointed MP and together the MPs are forming a government. That means anything which is passed by the Lok Sabha and then later on it goes to the Rajya Sabha also. Some bills go to the Rajya Sabha also. That means it has been approved by the people of India. And if you are aware that Supreme Court judgment was cancelled by bringing an amendment in the law. Have we seen that in a lot of places in our chapters? There was a Supreme Court judgment in the favour of SSE. And then the law got amended. Why? Because people of India did not like that judgment and therefore parliament changed it. And thus, whenever there is any conflict between ICDS and case law, this is done by judiciary. This is done by parliament. Parliament means people. People of India are superior to anybody else. ICDS will overrule the case law like it did in the case of Shakti Trading Company. The Supreme Court judgment was overruled by ICDS too. Understood? But, but there is a defect here. I'll tell you what that defect is and which will also answer why the act will overrule ICDS. When the government wanted to introduce ICDS earlier from 1516, then postponed to 1617, that is AY 1718, when the government wanted to introduce ICDS in our country, they came in the parliament and said that we are going to make standards, kindly pass this section. And in that section 145, which is there in assessment procedure, they said that government will notify standards. Passed by Lok Sabha, that means government got the permission of bringing the standard. But what is going to be the content of the standard? was not passed by the parliament that power government retained with itself that we will notify the standards so the act just says that government will notify standards not the content and then content was not passed in the lok sabha and therefore if there is any content which contradicts the act then icds cannot overrule the act and therefore act will be superior second will be icds and third will be any case law in other words ICDS is only powerful that it can overrule case law judgments. That's the chronology till now. Now understand the next event in the chronology. 
लाइक द सुप्रीम कोर्ट जजमेंट इन द केस ऑफ शक्ति ट्रेडिंग फॉर स्टॉक वैल्यूएशन इन केस ऑफ डिजोल्यूशन ऑफ पार्टनरशिप फॉर्म सुप्रीम कोर्ट सेड दैट यू कैन फॉलो योर नॉर्मल वैल्यूएशन मेथड बट ICDS said not you you cannot do that you will have to value your stock in trade at net realizable value like that supreme court judgment a lot of other supreme court judgments were also overruled when ICDS was introduced and did i just tell you that ICDS content was not passed by parliament only power was given by parliament to the government that you can bring whatever ICDS you want that power was given the moment some assessees realized that already decided court judgments are being overruled by the government by introducing icds some people started protesting against against this action of the government and they filed a writ petition in the delhi high court in the delhi high court stating that these standards were not passed by the parliament and therefore like you may have got a doubt when i said icds will overrule the case law when i said icds will overrule the case law because icds was passed by the parliament and immediately after that i said that icds content was not passed by the parliament then you would have got a doubt in your mind in that case how can icds overrule case law exactly on that ground some people filed a writ petition in the delhi high court writ petition injustice writ petition sir we have a case law in our favor now government brings icds and is cancelling the case law but this icds content has not been passed by the parliament then how can government force this on us and what did delhi high court do understand the chronology what did delhi high court do whichever icds had any content which was contradicting a decided case law delhi high court said all those clauses of icds will be cancelled that means these case laws which were earlier cancelled now got revived now got revived because the icds content was not passed by the parliament only power to bring icds was taken and if the content is not passed by the parliament that means people of india are not aware and then you cannot cancel court judgments that means can i say first we had case laws icds came case law got cancelled and now delhi high court is cancelling icds so case law comes back yes or no so we are back to the normal position now what i told you some time back there is one last step left in the chronology i told you some time back this is a very very stubborn government if they decide something they will do it now all the clauses pay attention pay very careful attention all the clauses of icds which were cancelled by the delhi high court because they were not passed by the parliament only power to bring icds was passed the content of icds was not passed government brought all those as amendment in the income tax act itself in section 145 of income tax act they introduced some sections in pgbp they introduced some sections in assessment procedure like 145a 145b they brought all these as amendment in the act and that means the provision was first introduced in the lok sabha passed by lok sabha passed by rajya sabha now it is a part of the act that means can i say content and it was very easy listen they have got enough number in the lok sabha they have got enough number in the rajya sabha the president who gives the assent to any law is only a stamp authority president of india only has to give a stamp president of india that way has no power otherwise they have the numbers and therefore it was very easy for them to present it through the parliament and now they got everything passed to the parliament and now whatever content of icds was disputed content has actually been made a part of the income tax act so icds will no longer be a separate set of standard it has become a part of the income tax act itself are you understanding this is the chronology that means that means sticking to its stubborn nature this government has now introduced all that so what we are going to do in this lecture of icds we will first be learning the content of icds and then whichever was the disputed point and is now introduced in the income tax act as section as last part of my slides of my pdf sheet in my summary i have uh, quoted those sections also and i have discussed everything in the summary also i will be discussing everything in my lecture also 
lecture also. So, are we clear about the following things? First, AS and ICDS will continue side by side. AS will be continuing for bookkeeping. ICDS will be for the purpose of computation of total income and tax liability. Main difference between AS and ICDS is ICDS will not follow prudence. Otherwise, AS and ICDS is same only. But wherever accounting standard follows prudence, ICDS will not follow that. Next, a very, very important factor. Very important factor. ICDS will be applicable from the previous year 16-17. That is the assessment year 17-18. That means, if you are still fighting any scrutiny, scrutiny is not possible, but any reassessment case or any other case in your office, which pertains to previous year 15, 16 or earlier, then that decision will be as per the old case law. ICDS came into effect prospectively from 1416, not retrospectively. So, for past years, you still have to give respect to the case law. Why are we discussing about the deleted case law? Reason is, Till 1516, that case law was applicable, will continue to be applicable. Second reason, second reason. Supposingly, today government again feels that no ICDS uh, is not good. It is less likely because now they have amended the act. But just assuming, if they find that ICDS is not proper or we should delete, if they delete anything from ICDS, automatically the old case law will get revived. There is still possibility. You don't know. You don't know. Very less possibility, almost, almost impossible because they have amended the act. If it was in the form of a standard, it was still more likely. But because they have amended the act, it is very less likely in case that happens and they abolish anything from the ICDS content, automatically the case law will get revived. Don't forget that also. So, ICDS will apply from 1617. Where were we? AS and ICDS simultaneously. AS will be for bookkeeping. ICDS will be for computation. Main difference will be the concept of prudence. ICDS will apply from 1617, very important, from 1617. So, for earlier years, we will continue to apply the old case laws, 1516, up to 1516 and earlier. Are we clear about that also? Are we clear? And one more thing which we have discussed in our regular course also, we will discuss now also. ICDS is applicable only for two heads of income. PGBP and IFOS because these are the only two heads of income where SSE is having freedom of method of accounting. If we talk about income from salary, income from salary, due or received whichever is earlier, already laid down method of accounting, we don't have any freedom. If we talk about house property, annual value will be taxable whether you receive or you don't receive. If we talk about capital gain, taxable in the year of transfer of asset. But PGBP and IFOS are two heads of income where assessee has the freedom to follow cash or accrual, whatever you want. And if you follow cash system, then there is again no problem. You are recording income only if you receive money. You are recording expenses only if you pay money. But if you follow accrual, then and only then ICDS is compulsory. ICDS is applicable only for two heads of income, PGBP, IFOS and only this is a very important point, very important point, only for PGBP, IFOS and only if you are following accrual method of accounting, only PGBP, IFOS, only if you are following accrual method of accounting, only if you are following accrual method of accounting and one more thing that they have stated here that for individual HUF, I already have it in my notes, so no need to write here, for individual HUF, only if they were covered under tax audit in the immediately preceding previous year. Like we have in TDS, all persons other than individual HUF, individual HUF only if covered under tax audit last year. So, that is also one condition for applicability. I have discussed everything of this slide in whatever I have been telling till now. Let us quickly check if we have discussed everything or no. Once we realize that we have discussed everything, that means the introduction of ICDS will get over and one by one, we will continue with the various standards. So, have we discussed previous year 16, 17, AY 17, 18? Earlier, it used to be, it was supposed to be 15, 16, but they postponed it for one year. I already told you very, very important point. ICDS is applicable only for PGBP, IFOS and only if you are following mercantile system that is accrual basis of accounting. That means if you have income from salary, house property, capital gain, ICDS not applicable. If you have PGBP, IFOS and you follow cash system, cash system, ICDS not applicable. No, supposingly, I am a prof supposingly I am a professional. I am a professional. I am a qualified chartered accountant. 
I follow cash system of account. I record income only when I receive money and book expense only when I pay money. ICDS is not applicable to me. ICDS is obviously I am a poor man. My Malayali students call it Pava Pittavan. Very poor, poor, poor person. I am not covered in the tax audit. Look at my face. Look at the poverty. Look at the grown beard in this lockdown. We are all locked down in our houses. I am a very poor guy. So I am not covered in tax audit also. Jokes apart. Jokes apart. Only PCBP IFOS. Only accrual system of accounting. And individual HUF if covered under tax audit. Remember these three points for applicability of ICDS. For any issue where you have to decide whether ICDS is applicable or not applicable, you have to remember these points. I hope I am very, very clear about this also. As I have been telling you that there are deviations between ICDS and accounting standard and deviations between ICDS and court cases. Main difference is going to be the concept of prudence. So in whichever ICDS, there is a deviation. Our focus will be on that particular point, most of the institute questions are also based on that particular point. And I already told you, if there is conflict between act and ICDS, then act will prevail. Conflict between ICDS and accounting standard and case law, then in that case, ICDS will prevail. But remember, from 1416, that means till 1516, the case law will be applicable. From 1617, ICDS will be applicable, but act is always going to be applicable. Understood? all of you all. So this is the introduction of income computation and disclosure standards ICDS, a topic about which a lot of students are worried, afraid, scared. There is no real need to be afraid or to be scared. Obviously, it depends on who you learn it from. It totally depends on who you learn it from. There is no real need to be worried or be afraid. But this is the introduction of income computation and disclosure standards. I will call my part one as over. Now, and my part two of the lecture onwards, I will be teaching you one by one uh, the 10 ICDS with more focus on exam point of view, the deviations between AS and ICDS, the deviations between case law and ICDS. One by one, we will be doing from part two onwards. We'll call part one introduction to ICDS as over here. Thank you very much. All the best.